All right, welcome back. Uh, today, we're gonna learn a few things about wave behavior. Um, one of the things we're gonna have to learn is uh, what is an incident wave and a reflected wave. So if I give you a, um, now th there's different types of waves, obviously, but let's let's talk about, for example, a uh, a string wave, a wave on a string. So we could have, for example, a string like this with a wave that's going like that, and the wave, let's say, is traveling in this direction. And here we have a, this is our boundary. And this is a fixed boundary. In other words, it could be a wall, something holding the end of the string or rope. So in this case, this incoming wave here is called the incident wave. Then, once the wave is reflected back, then it, it actually gets inverted. And the reason why it's inverted is because of the fixed boundary. So this is called the reflected wave. Okay, let's actually move this over a little bit so you can see underneath my image. There we go. There's the reflected wave. So now you should have a concept of what incident and reflected, what they are, what their meaning is. Uh, but more importantly, I want you to understand that for a fixed boundary, okay, the reflected wave is going to be inverted. So let's write that down. Uh, for a fixed boundary end, The reflected wave will be inverted. Inverted just means upside down. Now, um, let's try and prove this. Okay, so here we are. Uh, I've changed the screen from a regular just canvas to this um, website and it's uh, called fetcolorado.edu. You can see the URL up here. And the experiment that we're playing with to make some uh, discoveries about waves are it's called wave on a string. So if you go to that website and you go to physics, you can see waves on a string. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to verify that, you notice we have a few different types of ends. Here we have a fixed end, which is essentially a vise holding the end of the string. Another one is a loose end where we have a rod with a ring attached to it, so it's not fixed end. And then the other one is simply a window where the string goes off to infinity and nothing is reflected. Okay, but let's go back to the fixed end. And let's actually also reduce damping to zero because we don't want any damping here. Um, we can leave the tension for now. If we want, we can put rulers on. And um, also, uh, we'll, we'll use a timer later, but we can turn it on right now. All right, so let's grab this wrench here to create the oscillation pulse. 
and um, let's shake it. I'm gonna push it up and then pull it down real quickly. Uh, that's a bit too much. A bit too much. Uh, let's stop that and let's reset it. Oops. Okay, I get rid of everything here. Uh, I should have start. Maybe clicked up there here. So, how about just a smaller one? You can see that when the wave comes back, it is in fact inverted. Now, if I if I restart this and click on pulse, and I send a pulse, if I go click, you can see that the wave indeed, when it is reflected from the fixed end, that it is inverted. So let's put that down as uh, one of our discoveries. Okay, so actually I, I forgot we already wrote that down in our notes. Let's try the other one now. Let's try the loose end. And let's actually send a pulse and let's watch what happens here. And now you notice that, notice this side's fixed, right? But when it gets reflected back from the loose end, it, it comes back upright, okay? And if it's, if it's inverted, it comes back inverted. So it's not flipped. So this is the important one, and there you go. So let's stop this now, and let's put that in our note. We'll say for a uh, not fixed end or for an open end. I think a better word would be for a loose end. Point boundary. the reflected wave is upright. So if I was to draw a picture of this, so let's just draw a line here, and the picture of this would be like this. We have a wave that's incoming and now we're going to draw a circle here with a rod like that. And here is our incident wave. And now that's the before. Now here is the after. We therefore have the reflected wave upright. There we go. Okay, that's for the loose end. Okay. Alright, so the next thing we're going to look at here is how is the wave equation how does the wave equation, how is it affected? We can, let's play with it and let's see. Let's say, okay, so the wave equation was velocity equals frequency times lambda. Now, how, how are these things related? First thing let's do is let's go back to the uh, wave, string wave generator and let's find out what affects the velocity. How can we affect the velocity of a wave? So let's do that. So in order to do this, let's um, go back to what we're going to do here to see the velocity of the wave is let's go to oscillate and let's let's stop it for a second because we're gonna have re, uh, reflections here. We don't want an end here, so we're gonna want no end. Okay. The other thing we're gonna do is we're going to put the frequency down to approximately uh, 0.5. And now I, I, you know what? Actually, let's let's well we can, we can leave the frequency at 0.5 right now. So let's leave it there. You'll see what the reason I'm doing this. So 
Let's also, um, well, we can leave the amplitude like that, but more importantly, we want to get rid of the, the damping. And let's also reduce the, the tension down to low. And let's actually play it. Now, we have to wait a little bit before we, um, we might actually, we're not going to, let's just go restart. There we go. That's what I wanted. Okay, so now you can see that we are sending waves off into infinity through the window. But importantly, you notice you can see the green dots here. So let's actually freeze this for a moment. And let me bring up my timer too, but let's freeze it. And I'm going to freeze it when this dot is right on the center line. Let's see how good I am at that. Nope, missed. Nope, missed. Missed again. OK, that's not bad. So if we can see here, we see that from this point to this point, we have a full wavelength. OK? So that is one full wavelength. Now, at this point, the green dot's going down. So let's see how long it takes uh, for this last green dot that we can see in the window, how long does it take to go down? So what we're going to do is, if I continue playing it, so this is like down, 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 down. So that's how long it took to go across. Okay. So in other words, I'll say I'll I'll verbally I'll count it out such that every time each green dot goes down across the dotted line I'll go I'll I'll say 1 2 3 4 okay now that doesn't necessarily mean those are seconds I'm going to use the timer to calculate this number of seconds but when I go down I'll go 1 2 3 4 5 6 like that okay so here we go on your mark get set down, 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 down. And you can see that when I stop the timer, I'm at 5.93. Now that's really darn close to six seconds. Okay, let's try increasing, or let's try, let's try first, let's try decreasing the amplitude. I was at 0.75. Let's go to 0.25. Okay. Now, just remember this number. 5.93 is almost 6 seconds, right? And let's start it again. Let's reset it. And I'll do the same thing again. It looks like the wave is traveling slower, doesn't it? Because I've reduced the amplitude. Remember, I've reduced the amplitude by a third. It was at 0.75 before, now I'm at 0.25. Okay, let's put our finger on the timer again and I'll start it when I'm going down. On your mark, get set, down, 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 down. And there you go. It's 5.99 seconds, almost exactly the same. Therefore, what can we conclude? I can therefore conclude that changing the amplitude does not change the velocity of the wave. That's number one. Let's now try changing something else. How about what if we change the frequency? After all, the wave equation, right, has velocity equals frequency times wavelength. Well, surely. If we change the frequency, what if we, let's say, for example, double the frequency? Let's try it. Let's, let's bump the frequency up to 1.0. There we go. And does that look like it's traveling faster? Well, be careful. There are more waves here. Okay, but the question is, is, are they moving faster? Remember what our time was last time was six seconds. So let's reset. 
And I'm going to start counting again. Every time this green dot goes down, I'm going to go one, two, three, four until all the way to the end. So essentially, I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. Okay? Here we go. And I'm going to start it as soon as I go down across the dotted line. Ready? I put my finger on the, on the timer. And let's see what happens if we double the frequency from 0.5 to 1.0. Going down now. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And you can see the time that I got. Again, now this is human error, obviously. I am no, uh, 9 one hundredths, and I'm, I'm not perfect. I'm not, I, I, I can only do so well in terms of my timing. But you can see that that's almost 6 seconds again. Therefore, what have we discovered? Changing the amplitude did not affect the velocity of the wave, and changing the frequency did not affect the velocity of the wave. You guys with me? What does affect the velocity of the wave? Well, now we're not going to touch damping. The only other thing we can play with here is tension. Now that's the tension in the string. Let's reduce the frequency back down to 0.5, which is it's easier to count that one. Okay, and we can actually leave the amplitude as it is now, but let's increase the tension to perhaps maybe let's say halfway. Okay. <clears throat> now, let's reset the timer and notice I'm going to start counting when this dot goes down and then finally when the last dot goes down, right? So it'll be like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Ready? Here we go. On your mark, so I'm going to start counting here on the first one. And one, two, three, four, five, six. Wow, that was much faster than six seconds. Okay, I think that's around two seconds. I was a little slow clicking it off, about 0.1 seconds slow. So increasing the tension really did increase the velocity. Now, this might look slow, okay? so. Maybe perhaps, what if we increase the, we know that increasing the amplitude isn't going to do anything. Let's increase the amplitude to 0.5. Okay. And we could even increase the frequency. Should we increase it to 1? Okay. Ready? Remember how much it was before. It was about approximately 2 seconds, right? So again, we'll try and hit it going down and then going down. Ready? On your marks, get set. This is going to have to be I have to be really quick on this one. So, down, 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 down. Yes. Not bad. Not bad. I got really close to 2 seconds. So, what what have we learned from this? Well, we've learned that Changing the amplitude or the frequency does not have an effect on the velocity of the wave. But in fact, the tension does. So let's go and write a statement regarding how we could sum up our discovery. OK, so the conclusion that we can come to from our little exploration uh, of that wave generator is that the velocity of the wave is only dependent on the tension. Now, when I say tension, 
I'm going to put this in brackets and I'll say on the medium of the wave. So, because we, we, we may not just have uh, a string, it could be water waves, it could be sound waves. So in those particular cases, we can't say tension, but really, this is this tension is is is, is only for a, the special case of a st of a string or a cable, but the more general answer to this is that the velocity of the wave is only dependent on the medium of the wave, and the medium is what the wave is traveling through. So. Uh, whatever it may be, whether it's air or whether it's water or whether it's steel or whether it's a cable, that is what determines the velocity of the wave. Therefore, if we keep this in mind, and we know that if we do not change the medium, then we know that this equation, the wave equation, therefore we know that the velocity must remain constant. But since the velocity is a product of frequency multiplied by wavelength. That means the, the product remains constant. So if we increase the frequency, that means the wavelength must decrease. And also, vice versa, if we decrease the frequency, that means the wavelength must increase. As an example, you know, like if we said uh, the velocity is if it's 12 you could say if you re decrease the frequency down to 2 then the wavelength would be 6 and vice versa if the, vo the velocity stays the same because it's the same medium but if you increase the frequency to 6 then the wavelength must reduce down to 2 in other words the product always going to give you this the, the same answer so you can see that clearly when we go back to the, uh, the wave generator. So here is our wave generator again. Let's see if we can uh, freeze this for a moment where I'm going to try and get this green dot to stay on the line. Nope. OK, pretty close. Um, you can see here that our wavelength here is starting here ending right about there so it's just shy of four okay maybe like if this is uh, what is this one two three four five so it's about 3.8 or so um, now if we decrease the frequency remember V equals F lambda so if we decrease the frequency, that means the wavelength must increase. Let's cut the frequency in half. Okay. Remember what it is here. It's about 3.8 uh, approximately. So if we cut this in half, and we'll come down to about 0.5. There we go. And let's start it up again. And now, let's freeze it again. And you can see there's our full f wavelength. And unfortunately, uh, it's just past 7. So like, if this is 6, maybe 7 is about here. It's past that. So 3.8 times 2. There you go, approximately uh, 7.6, which is exactly where we are. So if you'll notice, this is one full wavelength, okay, all the way to here. And so we're at double the wavelength we had before, which was 3.8, double it. So as we uh, decrease the frequency, we increase the wavelength. So there you go. I hope that, uh, and the velocity obviously stays the same. We haven't changed the velocity. I hope that uh, that was a informative uh, video for you. Thanks for watching.